All right, a video that has been delayed in the making has finally, well, started to come to fruition here. And based on what you see on the box, oh boy, this is gonna be a fun one. So let's get into it. So today I have an unboxing, something I don't normally do, but we're doing something at least a little different to keep content during you know what, a little bit more interesting than the average content I usually put out. So today we have a thin client inside the box. So there's your spoiler. Obviously you probably would have figured it out because I pointed out the model number there. So those keyboard warriors probably already figured out what kind of a piece of junk I bought. So without further delay, let's hopefully get into this. I've got like the worst tool to open a box with. So I might have to resort to uh, more evasive measures as far as opening this box is concerned with one hand. Actually, I might not even be able to do this with one hand. So jump cut. Okay, so I finally got the size of the box cut open here. I've made a little bit of a opening here. So I can hopefully just run the scissors down the box in a very professional manner. Or not. That's not working. <laughs> All right. Oh, I got server muted. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Who server muted me? When, when it's done uploading, did it say it finished Somebody uploading? server muted me. That's fun. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. My friend was talking to me, and I didn't want to... Oh, my bad. My bad. Topic. I mean, I was, I was recording, <laughs> so there's nothing I could really do. I got the Charles Show here, uh, kind of a guest sponsor, unintentionally. Hey, yeah. <laughs> also, uh, we got packing peanuts, so this is going to be fun. Why don't you eat them? I'm not, like, uh, the key keeper, or, sorry, UXW Bill's brother. <laughs> and I don't have a bed to toss them on. Well, we got a power cord uses the typical Mickey Mouse ear style of plug. So the power brick should be on this side, and it is. It is your standard HP power brick, 65 watts with the standard barrel connector. I have plenty of those, so I guess it's nice to have another. And it looks like we have the thin client itself. Now it was advertised as not including a stand, which is fine. And somehow I'm actually doing this without making a mess everywhere. That's impressive. So here we have it. The HP T630. Let me get this uh, bubble wrap out of the bubble wrap. Packing peanuts, rather, out of the way. And then we'll uh, get to cutting this open. All right. So you're on the white angle today for a little bit. So hopefully I don't get nauseated or deal with poor image quality. I'm trying to look for a seam here. This is a nice bubble wrap. Like, this is honestly really really nice I mean you could beat it well that would work that would be the that would beat the fun I can't even English as per usual in my videos <laughs> it's like a little bubble wrap envelope of sorts it's actually not too shabby and it's very firm around the actual thing itself so that's some nice stuff I'm gonna hang on to it that's really nice so here it is the T630. You got your standard vase mount here, and it's a plastic exterior, nothing too unexpected. I just cut myself open. Look at that. It wouldn't be an unboxing video if you didn't cut yourself open. Apparently. Ouch. Oh, that's fine. It's not like I'm used to it already. And then there's a little thing here. Actually, let me guys, let me get you guys off the wide angle real quick so I can show you this. So right here, you're supposed to be able to pull this out, and it's supposed to contain like your Mac address, your um, product labeling, all that stuff. Pretty neat. Probably in case people have to come around and start pulling these out to, you know, do maintenance or inventory on the, on the site or something. Very nice design. It's got two USB 3.0s and two USB 2.0s on the front, as well as a headset jack. And on the rear, this is honestly the best part about this. It actually has a VGA port as well as two display ports, two more USB 2.0 ports. I didn't forget the audio jack. It's a combination line-in, line-out jack. It's got a nine-pin serial port, which is extremely useful, honestly. PS2 keyboard and mouse, and then a gigabit ethernet port. And then there is the standard HP barrel jack for charging. And these things, I think they should be pretty easy to open up. I'm not gonna really do it here on camera, but this little back piece comes off. And on a lot of these, 
um, sometimes they're missing this piece and they're just this bare metal shield. So it's really nice that this actually has the little back piece. And then it looks like uh, five screws, maybe take off the little standoffs for the VGA port and the serial port and whatnot. If you wanna take the rest of this thing apart, I think. What's this little green latch do? Does that allow the cover to come off? Or do you have to take those screws off? Oh yeah, you can just unlock it and bada boom, bada bing, Bob's your uncle, you are in like Flynn. That's not bad at all. So here we have it. You get a little embedded speaker. That's actually really useful. I did not know. I wonder if it's just for like the PC speaker, if that's actually a full-fledged internal speaker. That'd be kind of cool to figure out if that's actually true. So we I have mean, a- HP does that a lot, so. Um... Right, and same thing with Dell, they do that too. So I wonder if that's actually true. Hmm, I'll come back to that, obviously. So this is a really nice thin client, much nicer than some of these you actually find, which are some of them are just quite awfully dreadful. So here is the heat sink, and it's a massive heat sink. Like this thing is beefy. And we have two DDR4 SD RAM slots, one of which is a populated four gig DDR4, looks like 2400 megahertz. So that's pretty decent. Samsung memory, so pretty quality stuff. The APU sits right here. Uh, the APU in this case is actually an AMD GX 420 GI with Radeon R7E embedded graphics. So something that's pretty decent. There's the wireless card. Let's see if I can read the model number on it. It is an Intel 3168 NGW. Looks like it has a couple of antenna connections there. We also have the little board that houses uh, the USB ports there. Very nice layout. Honestly, and I love the fact that it's got dual DDR4 uh, SODIM slots so you can actually upgrade the RAM. I think these max out to 32 gigs if you really needed it to, which is pretty impressive. And then we have two M.2 slots. I believe one is a P key and the other is an E key. I believe this would be used, um, what does it say on the motherboard? It says ROM recovery. That looks like that'd be for that pin header there. So if you had to recover the BIOS or something, that's pretty neato. But I believe... You can throw in dual SSDs in this, which is pretty slick. So this one would have to be the same size as that SanDisk SSD here, which as you can see is a 16 gig M.2 SSD. But this slot here allows you, you can put in a larger M.2 SSD, which is sweet. And you can even move this little standoff and put in a larger, I think this would even accept a full length M.2 SSD, which is excellent. So if you really wanted to put in a, um, a larger SSD you absolutely could. And another nice C that I just now noticed, this has an internal USB 3 port. So you could probably plug in a flash drive and use that as a boot device. It would be slow, but hey, if you're doing a server, that'd be perfect. So you can have your operating system load into RAM and you can just have that USB stick in there for your storage or whatever. Dude, this thing is sweet. I freaking love it. That is nice. Honestly, I mean, you know what? Yeah, yours is a beating me especially with connectivity yeah it, the usb 3 is probably something that's universal at this point with thin clients because fast usb is kind of a necessity mine only has one. Oh, that's right <laughs> so charles on the <laughs> other hand he actually ordered a thin client as well his was the dell wise what was it the 3040 3040 yeah and his is an adult adult adam x5 z8350 based thin client and uh uh-oh, I found the dreaded CMOS clear button on the motherboard. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but yeah, this thing I bought for just under 40 bucks, and then the shipping made it forty or $43.21. So this was absolutely, without a doubt, worth the money. And you'd probably pay about that much if you were to find like a second-hand Core 2 Duo, and this thing would have two extra cores and it's a little bit more powerful and it has better integrated graphics and it takes DDR4 RAM. So this could almost class as a low end desktop computer almost, which is crazy. So, all right, let's go ahead and put the cover back on and we'll power it up on my desk. I gotta have DisplayPort for that because I mean, I could use VGA, but I'm gonna use DisplayPort and my nice mechanical keyboard because I'm just a weeb like that. So I will be right back. All right, so it's go time. I got everything plugged in except for the power cord here. So I tried auto powering it on when I plugged it in. So I'm gonna catch the moment on camera if it does do that. 
Okay, this time it doesn't look like it's actually going to... Oh, nope, there it was. It's just not in the way. There we go. Does anything pop up on the screen, or is that just a self-test? Nope, it's booting up. It's booting up. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, we're booting. Oh, that's cool. It actually has a hard drive light. I did not notice that. I thought that was for something else, but that's actually a hard drive light. That's cool. You got everything. Dude, that thing is nifty. The only thing I don't have plugged in at the moment is speakers, but I just want to see if that actually is an internal speaker or not. So we'll, we'll find that out shortly. So it looks like it's got Windows 7 embedded on it, which is probably true because that's what the ad said. Yeah. Windows embedded standard 7. Makes sense. Uh, stupid slow SSD. Why did he cheap out on the SSD? It sounds like me with the SSD in my Acer Aspire. <laughs> I mean, the, the SSD that's in there is like a, a CS900 PNY. It was a 240 gig drive oh. for like 30 bucks. Honestly, I won't. That's. Uh, excuse me. I will not touch a PNY SSD. I only did it because it was cheap. I mean, yeah, to cheap it, but still, no, thank you. <laughs> of course, as soon as I turn the camera off, it actually starts doing something. Yep, that is an internal speaker. It just played the Windows 7 startup sound. So it has Windows 7 on it? Yes, it has Windows Embedded Standard 7 at the moment, which is the original HP licensed operating system, I believe, for this particular unit. Underneath this little... Uh, info thing that slides out. I think it's what it mentioned. It was it used embedded standard seven as it's originally licensed OS. Correcto. Although this does have driver support for, um, I believe it's Windows 10 Enterprise IoT for thin clients or whatever the heck it's called. And it also has full Windows 10 drivers, which is pretty sleek, uh, pretty slick too. All right, so we have a desktop with an HP wallpaper and no icons at the moment, which is fine. That's probably because you wouldn't be on the desktop of the thin client itself. You would mostly be connecting through some kind of uh, client, whether it be like VMware Horizon or Citrix. Uh, this one actually comes with Citrix preloaded from whoever redid this. And it's got a couple of other drivers on here for stuff so let's see if we can view the properties here uh not at the moment doesn't look like it can i do that it's a pretty limited login but that doesn't surprise me because it's just meant to be like a little shell for logging yep it also has the vmware horizon client there it's also got a cyberlink media player that's pretty neato there's that HP Thin Update program, which is used for uploading or uploading, downloading the uh, drivers. So let's view this HP system information thing here real quick. So as you can see, Windows Embedded Standard, it's 32-bit, so it only recognizes three gigs of the RAM, or maybe one gig is shared for the graphics memory. AMD Embedded G-Series GX420GI with Radeon R7E graphics and uh, all that good stuff. What's the driver information do? Interesting. I have no idea what the password is, so uh, whatever it is, I'm sure that it's uh, on there somewhere. Interesting. So it's got a bunch of receiving software. Um, is run enabled? No, it's not. That doesn't surprise me because they probably HP locked it down. Yeah, HP locked it down quite good. Does not surprise me. Um, what's under assistant tools? Just Internet Explorer. No accessibility. Um, do have access to paint though. So, hey, that's pretty cool. But uh, let's see if we can uh, kind of like get into this thing through the Internet Explorer. See if it will let me uh, kind of like sneak my way into the SSD. Uh, if I just do the backslash. Oh, it's been disallowed. Okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah. HP's preloaded OS has a lot of stuff locked down, which makes sense just because, again, you would normally have this thing just connecting to a server and you wouldn't use the local operating system for anything because uh, security risks. But that's pretty much all I really wanted to see was if it would boot up, and it certainly does, so that's awesome. Um, I also wonder, I'm going to go shut this down and restart into the BIOS because I actually am curious to see 
if they potentially have a UEFI option in the BIOS, it would make sense for something like this to be in BIOS mode when it's running Windows 7. That makes sense. But if you're running Windows 10, I almost wonder if you have a UEFI BIOS. I know the newer ones probably do. I'm not sure which key it is. It must have been one of those. Okay. So that's a memory test, hard drive check, language, and exit menu. Okay. I think this probably has F10 as its BIOS or maybe... Oh, that's not what, that's not what I want to do. Control, delete. This is one of those where you have to press escape for a startup menu. Yeah, mine's escape as well because it's an HP. Okay, here we go. So let's go into computer setup. All right, just a typical HP BIOS. Makes sense. So there's, again, 2 gigahertz GX420 GI, 4 gigs of RAM. You can also update the BIOS through here, which is pretty nice. This has a 2016 copyright. I wonder if this actually has a BIOS update. I'll have to check HP's website. So there's the 16 gig storage. AHCI makes sense, obviously. I'm not going to test that. No passwords in the BIOS, it looks like. That's a good thing. Um... All right, it does have secure boot. Does it have UEFI as an option somewhere? I would expect that it would. Of course, it's set up for doing network booting and all that because, you know, you'd expect that for a thin client. All right, all the ports are on. The other M.2 slot is on. Network booting is on. It's got power management in the BIOS. That's pretty neato. So let's see. There's some other stuff in there. You can have an auto power on it. This is basically your typical HP BIOS. Cool. Well, I think that'll probably wrap up this video. It's mainly just going to be an unboxing, but I figured I'd boot up the operating system and give it a quick look. I'm going to mainly do all the setup off camera just because it's going to take a little bit, but of course that's for me to figure out and for you to eventually watch whenever I get everything established. So Hopefully it was entertaining enough and hopefully we can have some fun with this thing later on in the future, not just with Windows, but, uh, well, obviously, again, that'll be me for, it'll be for me to figure out. Maybe you all can suggest some ideas for future videos with this thing. Uh, and of course, a thanks to the Charles Show and the voice chat for coming and uh, giving me company. And we'll probably have some uh, yeah. fun with thin clients in the future. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned for that. Until then, if you guys liked the video, well, then you know what to do. There's that button down below. You can click that. Or if you didn't like it so much, then the other button works too. If you want to see more content just like this, or maybe potentially some more entertaining content, you, there's a red button down below that says subscribe. You can click on it and hopefully have some fun watching some other content of mine. And until the next video, I'll, I'll see you all. I'll see you later. But I can't even end my own videos still. English. Yay. Anyways, see you later.